Bill O'Reilly is going to go after Bernie Sanders here for talking about mass incarceration without bringing up black-on-black -black crime. Now, on the Democrat side, Bernie Sanders must get black votes in order to compete with Hillary Clinton in South Carolina and Nevada. He started his campaign for those votes last night. When we talk about transforming America, it means ending the disgrace of this country having more people in jail than any other country in the world, disproportionately African-American and Latino. Well, Sanders says he is a straight talker, but not, not on this issue. Here's the truth. African-Americans make up 13% of the total population in the USA, but commit 37% of all murders. And 90% of black murder victims are killed by other blacks. You will never, ever hear either Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton say that. Public candidates will not likely point it out either because it's politically incorrect. It's much easier to cry racism than actually address the root causes of violent crime, which are a corrosive culture and the collapse of the traditional family. Bill, that statistic is almost exactly the same for white people. 90% of blacks are killed by other blacks! Got them! Why don't those blacks stop committing crimes, goddammit? Um, like I said, it's about the same for white people. Now, why is that? Because it just so happens to be the case that black people mostly live around other black people, and white people mostly live around other white people. And, uh, you end up killing people who you're around. If you kill people. That's usually how it works. So, the reason why people don't bring up that point often, Bill, is because it's an asinine point to make. And it's clear that you're, you're working backwards to your conclusion. Your conclusion being, it's gotta be their fault! It's gotta always be bootstraps, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, personal responsibility, that's what this comes down to. And he goes on to say it clearly there, he says, uh, the, the real, we gotta get down to the real root causes here, which are a corros corrosive culture and the destruction uh, of the family. Okay, now, here's the rebuttal to that. In terms of the family, what led to the destruction of the family that you're talking about? He never wants to get into that. He just wants to make it seem like or imply that, well, you know, they just can't keep their shit together, so they end up getting more divorces, they end up having kids out of wedlock, and you can only blame them. That's uh, Who else are you going to blame? It's obviously only their fault. Except when you look back historically, uh, they're began to be a so-called breakdown of the family when we started shipping out all of the uh, good-paying middle-class factory jobs that African Americans were getting. So as soon as we started doing, you know, uh, NAFTA and the WTO and CAFTA and permanent normal trade relations with China, and uh, as soon as we started closing up manufacturing jobs in the U.S., well, then there was, you know, all the, the black families that were making it to the middle class, all of a sudden they were poor, and then what's one of the main things that leads to divorce? Financial troubles. So this is tied to macroeconomic problems that we have. This idea that it's just like, you know, it's just how they are, they can't keep their shit together, they should just not get divorced. I mean, think about how silly that is. Think about how poor that logic is. Like, so what do you want to do, Bill? You just, well, let's go knock on doors and force people like, why, hey, you, stay together. Stop having babies out of wedlock. And also, you know what would help that as well? Family planning. <laughs> of course, free clinics, Planned Parenthood, contraception, more education, sex education. Are you in favor of that, Bill? No, 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 he's not in favor of that. But hey, stop having kids out of wedlock, the destruction of the American family. Now watch as I ship more of your uh, good jobs overseas, and you become poor, and I prevent uh, family planning and free clinics. Okay, so that's addressing just the family part of his argument. Now, to the corrosive culture part of the argument, that's a, that's a dodge. It's an out-and-out -out dodge. Uh, look, Bill, in so-called white culture, we have Rambo, Sylvester Stallone. We have The Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, you know, we have Steven Seagal, we have Chuck Norris, we have... Endless rock songs about doing heroin or cocaine or fucking and all that stuff. 
And has Bill O'Reilly ever once in his life come out and said, Ah, oh, oh, look at all the, the, the crime being committed by these frat boys on these campuses. Uh, it's got to be the culture. It's got to be it's got to be the music they listen to and the entertainment and stuff like that. That's why culture is the problem. No, he wouldn't make that argument. You want to know why? Because it's a silly argument. It's a silly argument for white people. Silly argument for black people. You know, the rap music and the, the bad culture and this and that. I got news for you, Bill. That's just entertainment in the same way that, you know, uh, violent video games. I've played Rainbow Six. I still, to this day, sometimes play Nazi zombies on Call of Duty. When I'm done playing, I don't want to go pick up a gun and shoot people in the face. I'm able to make the distinction. So when you talk about entertainment for the black community, all of a sudden he, he takes agency out of the picture and he pretends like they can't tell the difference and they go, oh, it's just the fault of, of the corrosive culture and the breakdown of the family. And notice what the end result is. He ends up really avoiding discussing, discussing the real issues that would fix the problem. So when you talk about uh, how to fix these social ills, well, the liberals have been saying it for the longest time. If you, for example, stop doing these stupid free trade deals, get out of the ones that we're in, bring good uh, factory jobs, manufacturing jobs back here to give people an opportunity, that helps. If you have a better education system, that helps. Uh, if you raise the minimum wage and increase unionization, that helps to give people another, a better shot at equal opportunity. And if you, which is the biggest point here, stop the drug war, that will stop mass incarceration. I mean, the, the era of mass incarceration is directly tied to, and it's directly because of the drug war. Because we decided we're going to lock people up for smoking weed or selling a small amount of drugs, and it ruins their life. And it makes it so that we have more people in jail here now than fucking Stalin did in his gulags at their height.